Greetings. Let us talk about portal venous system anatomy. And this is really critical for anyone interested in understanding the pathophysiology of liver disease. I want to thank many of my supporters and mentors for making this possible. So, how is portal venous system different from systemic venous system? So, if you think about a vein starting in the leg, it starts as capillaries, venules, veins, and they become bigger, join other veins, and then finally end up in the inferior vena cava or the superior vena cava, and then they enter into the right atrium. In contrast to that, portal system, portal venous system starts as capillaries and they join to become venules, veins, portal vein, and then the portal vein enters the liver and then divides and then becomes venules and capillaries. So portal venous system is characterized by a venous system that starts as capillaries and ends as capillaries and it does not drain into the heart directly. So what does the portal venous system drain? It drains the lower esophagus, stomach, small intestine, right colon, left colon and rectum, as well as spleen and pancreas. So let us focus on the critical anatomy that is important for clinicians. So the small intestine and the large intestine are drained by mesenteric veins, superior mesenteric vein and inferior mesenteric vein. And I'm not shown the inferior mesenteric vein. The inferior mesenteric vein drains the left side of the colon and rectum and joins the splenic vein. So the spleen is drained by the splenic vein. The splenic vein joins the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. And the portal vein divides into right and left branch and then branches out and then supplies the cells of the liver. And then from there, again, the capillaries start reunite, reuniting, forming central veins, then hepatic venules, branches of hepatic vein, hepatic veins that drain into the inferior vena cava. So this is uh, how the portal system is created. For the sake of uh, any physician or a surgeon interested in liver disease, there are a couple of veins we should always keep in mind. One is the left gastric vein that drains from the upper portion of the stomach, especially along the lesser curve, which is also draining the lower portion of the esophagus via the esophageal veins draining into the left gastric vein and then into the portal vein. The lower portion of the stomach is drained by the right gastric vein that also joins the portal vein. One more important vein that we should keep in mind, especially that drains the fundus of the stomach and the upper portion of the greater curvature of the stomach, and these are multiple short gastric veins. 
that drain into the splenic vein. And then from splenic vein, joining with the superior mesenteric vein, forming the portal vein. So let us look at the flow. The flow is from the intestines through the mesenteric veins into the portal vein, liver, hepatic veins, and inferior vena cava. That is the flow of portal venous system to the liver and from the liver via the hepatic veins and inferior vena vena cava to the right atrium. So we talked that the portal vein divides into branches and becomes capillaries. And look, let us look at a piece of the liver under microscope. And what is the basic unit of the liver? It is the liver lobule. What is the basic unit of kidney? It is the nephron and the glomerulus. So let us look at the liver lobule. And what is a liver lobule? This is liver lobule. And the liver lobule consists of liver cells or hepatocytes. And these are arranged as linear cards or liver Cards. The liver lobule in the periphery has portal triads consisting of portal vein, hepatic artery, and hepatic duct branches. So here is the portal vein that drains blood from the portal venous system and then branches out to form capillaries. The liver capillaries are known as sinusoids that ultimately again drain into the central vein in a liver lobule. So for your understanding, let me make this slide a little bit bigger so that you can see this anatomy clearly. You can see the portal vein branch draining, emptying its blood into the sinusoid marked by S, and the sinusoid joins the central vein. So let us take one step further and magnify this even further. And this is the basic unit that you should keep in mind. And let me uh, take away the liver lobule and let us focus on the portal triad, sinusoid, hepatic cards to the central vein as one unit. So here is that unit. And let us review this anatomy. This is the most important anatomy to keep in mind. Portal vein, central vein and the blood from the portal vein goes via the sinusoids into the central vein. Sinusoids are no different from any other capillaries that are lined by endothelial cells. And the sinusoids allow the, the blood to flow through that and Liver has a reticular endothelial system. The uh, endothelial, reticular endothelial cells uh, are also known as cuffer cells. These are like macrophages. So the sinusoids are surrounded by a single column of hepatocytes, the liver cords. And there is a little bit of space between the sinusoid and the hepatocyte, and that space allows the fluid from the sinusoids to go via the space in between the endothelial cells to reach the hepatocytes. 
various molecules go through that. And that space is known as the space of DC. You'll find interesting cells there, uh, some special cells. These cells are known as stellate cells. So we will find out about the stellate cells and their importance as we talk about liver injury, fibrosis, etc. So we talked about the portal vein, sinusoid, central vein, hepatocytes, space of DC, Cuffer cells in the sinusoids, stellate cells in the space of DC. So what else is there in the portal triad? The hepatic artery branch that also drains into the sinusoids and the bile that is secreted by the hepatocytes uh, is received by the hepatic duct via the canaliculus. So, let us see the flow of, of blood through this basic unit. The hepatic artery contributes about 25% of the blood flow to the liver and the portal vein 75% of the blood flow to the liver. So, it's important to keep in mind that the portal vein contributes majority of the blood to the liver. So we talked about the portal venous system, the anatomy, and the basic unit of a liver, the liver lobule. In the center, you have central vein. In the periphery, you have portal triads, and there are cords of cells surrounding the sinusoid as it allows the blood to go from the portal vein to the central vein. So let us uh, come back to this basic uh, picture. I want you to keep this image in mind and also learn the anatomy uh, and the names of different branches, which is very important when you see patients with different types of problems. So. To just uh, introduce you to the concept of uh, portal uh, system problems, you can have problems in the uh, portal venous system before it enters the liver, that is a prehepatic uh, portal venous uh, pathology, or it leads to prehepatic portal hypertension, or Inside the liver, uh, especially affecting the liver lobule, that is the intrahepatic portal hypertension. And finally, once the flow goes from the central veins into the branches of the hepatic veins and then into the IVC, that is the post hepatic hypertension. So I've given you uh, a little bit of an overview of the relevant anatomy that is important to understand about liver disease. This, this anatomy is really critical. And once you know this, as we build upon this in the later stages, you'll appreciate when you see your patient with liver disease. Thank you.